coming to you from Meadow Mill. I'm Amanda. That's Alan. You can join us here every Tuesday at 1230 for your weekly news roundup and a discussion of current events. Feel free to comment and ask us questions in the field below. All right. What's happening locally? Well, Anne Arundel County students may notice an extra police cruiser or more police officers on campus this week as the school system confronts an online threat made at Pasadena's Northeast High School, according to our friends at Baltimore Fishbowl. Mm. Anne Arundel County Public Schools said in a statement to parents and students issued via Facebook on February 25th that as a precaution and to help ease fear and anxiety for students, parents and staff, you may see an increased additional police presence at schools throughout the week. Okay. Tensions were also high for the Glen Burnie High School community after an incident from last week that led to more rumors, which pushed administrators to reach out to students there. Right. Anne Arundel County police have warned that online messages are taken seriously and, quote, those who post them will be held accountable for their actions. And, you know, th- this is happening everywhere. I mean, even I think there have been a couple scares at Baltimore County. I don't think anything credible, but a couple, you know, I mean, people get their. That's, yeah, that's the problem. They're like heightened senses. Heightened and they're just going to everything they see and everything. Right. Yeah, I mean, I remember flying really soon after 9 11, and mm-hmm. every backpack I saw everywhere, I was like, ugh, ugh, right. Ugh. right, we're all like that. <laughs> so people are very much on their guard, and the people are concerned about a lot that's going on out there after Parkland. Yeah, so be careful and don't um, make any false don't be statements. Stupid. So I want to put in a little plug. <laughs> yeah, don't okay. be, just don't be stupid. For any students who may be attending the March of Our Lives in December on March 24th, if you're interested in contributing to our live coverage that day, we're going to do that. So email me at amandak at jmoreliving.com. I will hold this up, but I don't know that you can see it, but we'll try. <laughs> but it's amandak at jmoreliving.com. All right. I, I'm not doing that again because you probably can't see it. All That's right. So kind of more local stuff. <laughs> yeah. The uh, man who helped grow the Johns Hopkins affiliated Kennedy Krieger Institute for the past three decades is stepping down from his post as CEO, according to Baltimore Fishbowl. Dr. G- Gary Goldstein is expected to retire once the institute appoints a new CEO and president. Goldstein has led the East Baltimore headquartered institution since 1988. That's a long time. Yeah, he's done a lot of work. It's It's been a privilege to lead Kennedy Krieger Institute over the past 30 years, he said in a statement. Through our interdisciplinary approach to patient care, research, professional training, and special education, we have positively impacted hundreds of thousands of children, young adults, and families. We've grown to become one of the largest academic institutions in the world serving children with developmental disorders and their families. And I've known some families that have really benefited from this institution. So. Yeah, they've touched a lot of people locally and yeah. apparently everywhere. They, yeah, they, do, they do really good work. Yeah. Kennedy Krieger served 24,000 patients in 2017, nearly nine times as many as it did when Goldstein was appointed CEO, and drew $30 million in research funding last year, up from 700000 in 1987. Wow. wow. The institute, institute has also expanded its special education programming to three outside campuses around, um, around Maryland. It now reaches 550 students annually. Goldstein plans to continue working with the foundation after he retires. The board of directors will undertake a national search for his replacement. Excellent. Good luck to Dr. Good Goldstein. Luck, Dr. Goldstein. If you're just joining us, this is Jay Moore's Need to Know on Facebook Live. Share, like, and follow at hashtag Jay Moore Need to Know. So in recent weeks, we've talked a lot about all the trouble that BB, Israeli Prime Minister <laughs> Benjamin Netanyahu, Netanyahu is in, um, and just all his shenanigans. So now we know how Israelis feel alleged about this. Alleged shenanigans. Alleged, sorry, alleged conspiracy and everything else. Right. Yes. So. Don't want to indulge in fake news here. Right, no. No, no. It's all alleged. <laughs> right. <laughs> all alleged. Uh, a TV news poll found that 50%, only 50%, only 50%. of Israelis believe that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, who's beset by corruption, corruption accusations, should resign. Some 33% of correspondents said he should remain in office, according to the results of the Hadashot survey released on February 21st, following the latest developments and the scandal known as Case, Case 4000. 4000. What a great name. <laughs> How do they yeah. come all these cool we names? Need, Only but Israelis. That, but that means that 3,999 <laughs> other cases have also yes. happened. <laughs> That's probably very true. <laughs> They've had a track record lately with politicians who have uh, – been beset by downfalls. Yeah, this is like the 4,000th one. Now, the snap poll, <laughs> what is the snap poll? I have no, no idea what knows. a snap poll is, sorry. Uh, I think no it was one it done in a hurry. Snap poll. <laughs> anyway, the snap poll 
by the privately owned station also found that 42 percent of course uh, re- sorry respondents favored early elections due to the allegations with 36 percent opposed and preferring to wait, wait until the scheduled wait. vote in November of 2019. <laughs> that was an attempt Rega, at an Israeli Rega. accent, but yeah, they, they're just like, whatever, we'll, we'll right. hang out there for another year, it's cool. The Gallup organization, in a report issued February 21st, found that prior to the corruption allegations, slightly more than half of Israelis, 52%, said in 2017 that they approved of how uh, Netanyahu was handling his job as prime minister. Now for an amazing yes, discovery Yes, I love this. I love these stories. An impression of what is believed to be the 2,700-year-old personal seal of the prophet Isaiah was uncovered in Jerusalem. Very cool. Amazing. Isaiah lived during the 8th century before the Common Era, BCE, mm-hmm. and prophesied about the return of the Jews from the Babylonian exile. Israeli archaeologist Eilat Mazar of the Hebrew University in Jerusalem reported on her discovery on February 22nd in the Biblical Archaeology Review magazine. The impression of the bula, or seal, was found during excavations in the area just below the southern wall of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. The the seal was found about 10 feet from where a seal of King Hezekiah was found three years ago. Wow. The seal bore the name of Isaiah in Hebrew and is followed by the first three letters of the Hebrew word navi, which means prophet. Mm -hmm. The aleph is missing, and it is not clear if it was on the seal but was just too damaged or did not appear on the seal meaning that it belonged to someone else named Isaiah. Like Isaiah Jones. Uh, Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Smith. Isaiah Isaiah Washington. It could have been any Isaiah, Isaiah, really. Isaiah Cooperstein. (laughs) Any of those guys. Just walking by the Temple Mount. (laughs) Oops, I dropped my seal. Oops. Uh, The the fact that it was found so close to the seal of King Hezekiah. Hezekiah, Alan. Lends credence. To the theory that it belonged to the oh, prophet, okay. however. So not Isaiah Jones. No. I love not. these stories. They're just like something out of Tomb Raider and Lost, Lost Art. Lost like, Art. Yeah. Yes. Um, Absolutely. And like anywhere you're walking, cool. that, that's how special the land is. You're walking around. In Israel. And like underneath, like some feet underneath you, there's right. treasures, big old treasures. Well, yeah. Fascinating. Some treasures or it could be maybe not treasures, but something <laughs> still kind of cool. I told you over at um, years ago, I did a story about the, at the uh, Lloyd Street Art uh, Synagogue. They had an uh, archaeological dig there. Glenn's yawning. And, he's uh, real excited he, about this. He's very excited. Too and um, and they, they found all this stuff that indicated a lot of stuff about the neighborhood there before the Jews came from that's, from Eastern Europe that I they didn't really, really know cool. about the neighborhood. Like there had been slaves there and uh, there were all kinds of different peoples that lived in the area. So they learned a lot from that. And it was underneath the uh, mikvah or the ritual bath that they have over wow. at the uh, synagogue. I, I mean, it's it's such a cool thing to be in that you get to uncover treasures, but like the patience required, just forget about it. Because for every the one of these stories, every one of these stories we hear, right. there's like years of nothing. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. But, and it does patience like, is a virtue it, there. Oh, no way. And you probably get carpal tunnel from all that sifting and yeah. brushing off the little stuff. Plus you're in the hot sun for hours. hours. Well, end. you get to wear the cool big hats. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> But no, yeah, it's it's probably not for me. I would like a little bit more activity <laughs> regularly. All right, so for the worst segue of the week, because I have nothing else to say, just tell well, us what else. <laughs> this also has been unearthed, right? Yeah, uh, well. The number of anti-Semitic incidents in the United States has spiked uh, in 2017. There were 1,986 acts of anti-Semitism in the country last year, according to an ADL audit released on February 27th. Today. That is more than today. That is more than double the total from 2015, which was 942. Mm. It's also a 57 percent increase over the 2016 total, 1,267. Mm-hmm. The audit said that the rise is due in part to an increase in people reporting incidents of anti-Semitism. So, so that's okay. That's that, that's good. Yeah, I mean, it might have always been this bad, and we just didn't hear about it. Right. So it's better that we're hearing about it. The 2017 number includes more than 160 bomb threats sent to Jewish community centers and other Jewish institutions early last year. And you may remember that it was a Jewish teen from Israel who was responsible and was arrested for making the vast majority of those threats, which were not all credible. Yeah, but even if he is a Jewish teen, if he's making bomb threats against JCCs, doesn't he still count as anti-Semitic? Oh, yeah, sure. But he just did. They just weren't real bombs. So that's why it wasn't credible. Right. OK. So the 2000. Uh, the discounting the JCC bomb threats, mm-hmm. reported incidents still increased by 43% over 2016. 
Anti-Semitic incidents on schools and college campuses also doubled in 2017 for the second year in a row. Which is That's, terrifying. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Because you don't want to send your kids anywhere anymore. No. Not to school anyway. The states that saw the most anti-Semitic incidents were those with large Jewish populations. <laughs> Which is odd. <laughs> New York had 380 incidents. California had 268. And New Jersey like, had 208. Yeah. I mean, you like to think you're safe in the places that have the most Jews because you're like, oh, I'm with my people. We'll be okay. Right. And like, I don't want to go to some little podunk town in Minnesota. But then again, mm -hmm. you're going to be more likely. Sometimes more incidents. it's better to be hiding in plain sight. <laughs> right. You know? They don't know what about you. They, they don't can't, care. They can't attack you, <laughs> really. Right. Uh, all right. So that's more horrible news. But... It is yes. a good sign that they report incidents. Um, so I have something that's going to really cheer yes. you up. Uh, we'll get to that later. But it is time for a Gal Gadot moment of the week. All right. Yay. Well, the Israeli actress will make her debut as a presenter at the Academy Awards ceremony. The Wonder Woman star was among 10 new presenters announced on February 21st by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. Others include Mark Hamill of Star Wars fame. Luke. Luke. And Hamilton creator Lynn Manuel Miranda, who you told me something very interesting. I just learned that in college he was in a Jewish a cappella group, and I think it was called the Mazel Tones. The Mazel Tones. <laughs> I think so, unless Great I just name. made that up. I don't think I made that up, though. Great name. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, he's a multifaceted guy. He's amazing. He's, he's amazing. He's amazing. Uh, Wonder Woman, despite its incredible box office success, did not receive any Oscar Shock. nominations. I am shocking. shocked. Very I would shocking. vote for that if I was in the <laughs> Academy. Um, Godot presented a Golden Globe Award last month for Best Actress to Rachel Brosnahan for her role in the Amy, a, Am, Amazon TV series The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. And, uh, which you least, love. You know, which I love. And she fall, Rachel Brosnahan falls in that category, I believe. Of that she should be Jewish, She's but not she Jewish. ain't. She ain't Go just figure. like Patty Lapone. Yeah, Patty yeah, Lapone. We love her. The 90th Oscar <laughs> ceremony will take place on March 4th. All right, I really I'm hope. And we'll be watching. Yeah, I, I really might. I really hope that Gal Gadot dresses as Queen Esther on Purim and then tweets about it because, be like, that cool. would make me really happy. So, speaking of Purim, yes, uh, let's do some phrases Festival today lots. just for the holiday. <laughs> lots. Oh, yeah, hit it, Alan. Okay. Well, the the Purim J word of the day. It's our phrase, anyway, is the Purim Suda. 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 And Suda means a holiday meal. Hmm. So the usage of it would be the Purim Suda is a highlight for many who enjoy eating and drinking in abundance. Yeah. My so kind of holiday. I've been to many a Suda where uh -huh. people get quite inebriated. They Amazing. imbibe sometimes to... Uh, it's just unusual for us. Most of the time, yes. we're not really heavily we're, drinking. We're known for not being big drinkers, <laughs> and uh, although that might be a little bit of a misnomer or a stereotype. Yeah. There are Jewish alcoholics, I'm just sure. letting you know. But yeah, you, uh, you see a lot of uh, drinkers, and uh, like, I, like I told you, one of my first uh, articles I wrote for another Jewish publication uh, was about a yeshiva student who drank on Purim and got very wasted and got in the car and drove and got himself killed. So um, that's a downer. Yeah, that's a thanks, downer. Thanks, Alan. Yeah, sorry. So make but sure if you do drink at your Suda that you call it Juber. Call it Juber. <laughs> there you go. We've been waiting all day no, to say that. Glenn one, didn't right? like it. He doesn't like he it. He didn't like it. So <laughs> all right, give us another phrase. Okay. And the other phrase we have here is shalach manut. Shalach manus. Manus. Right, manus. Which means a porn basket. Mm -hmm. Like um, a, not like an Easter basket though. No. No. Very different. Okay. Um, we sent Shalok Mano to our friends in Puerto Rico for the holiday. That's yeah. the usage for So it, it. might have had and, some paper towels in there? Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Bounty. <laughs> Quicker picker upper. Bounty's the and official sponsor. Our, our friend Ira Gawanter informed me earlier today that to be a Shalok Mano, to qualify, you have to have at least two items in there that um, – you know that are part of the gift, so it's got to be you know whatever hamantashen mm. or like I told you, my neighbors give us shalakmanas baskets and they've given us candy it's and incredible. cookies and I want if you had been juice. able to see my email address, you <laughs> could contact me so I can tell you where I live and you can deliver me some shalakmanos. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's good. I stuff. believe. I believe in you. Yeah. <laughs> So I was also t – we were talking earlier about Purim a little bit because it's a fascinating holiday. In mm -hmm. some ways it's a little disturbing even though we think of cute little kids in costumes. Right. And, uh, you know, when you really read the story in the Megillah, it's just interesting because, you know, you know, most stories – what do they say about uh, Jewish holidays? Uh, 
we they we, try to kill they us. They try to kill us. We, we won. won. We, let's, let's eat. eat. Right. Yeah. But with Purim, yeah, it's also we we they try to kill us. We fought we back. We won, and we fought back and killed a whole bunch of them. Like, let's eat. Slaughtered which how is many? a little uh, unique for Jewish holidays. Yeah. But if you read the uh, Megillah, you you see at the end that uh, the Jews were given a decree by the king that they could go out and pretty much uh, you know, I guess you, some people would call it self defense. Um, I talked to my friend. Rona Hirsch, our mm-hmm. mutual friend, about this uh, recently, and Michael Fetter, my friend in Jersey. Hi, Michael. <laughs> and we talked a little bit about this. Um, but, yeah, it's a little disturbing at the end, I guess, because uh, the Jews go out and kill 75,000 people Ooh. in the Empire of Shushan. Shushan. So that's something they don't tell you in Hebrew school. They just tell you about the cute stuff. But, yeah, it's a it's a much a more complicated, darker holiday than – so if anybody has any comments they want to yeah. mention in our fields there. Tell us how but, you feel about it. But uh, there's – it's got an interesting – when you really read it and uh, it's a very um, – intriguing multi-layered holiday yeah there's a lot of weirdness going on so we yeah. almost wiped shushan off the map but it was huge so we really didn't that's right um d- what's her face esther esther she esther was a hottie day. she was a hottie jewess who right. had to pretend to just be another chick from shushan right and then hey poor vashti that was the the queen before her who oh. got hers unfortunately oh she did yeah so so esther was the step-in queen yeah, well, she was the next in line, you know, and okay. they you know, they conducted their little, um, you know, bachelorette. Yeah. <laughs> and they found her. <laughs> that was the one that, that the king was pleased by. Shushan so bachelorette. It's, it's got all, you know, if you get a chance, read the Megillah. There's some I really mean, there's interesting. There's some stuff going on. Yeah, and even from a contemporary lens, it's a cool holiday. And then, so the reason you, we're commanded to drink so much is so we can't tell the difference. Between Haman and Mordecai. With the, good and evil. So, evil and good. Because whatever. it's a holiday of uh Unrealness and disbelief. And on my Gragger, I have a little. Mm-hmm. I lo- have a little Haman on my yeah. on the top of my Gragger. He's not looking too happy there either. And then <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not. So uh, there's tons of stuff we could go on all day, yeah, but all but day. you guys Gets either know the esoteric. story or you don't want to hear it or you tell us tell us yourselves. I don't we want Glenda yawn again. We have some theories about why you wear a mask on Purim. Mm-hmm. You tell us what your theories are. We think we think we've come up with a pretty good answer, but you tell us. Yeah, let us know. Um, all right, so Aaron begins at sundown tomorrow, ends the evening of March 1. Correct. That's going to be it for us today. Remember, join us here Tuesdays at 1230 for your Need to Know News Roundup. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and follow at hashtag JMoreNeedToKnow. Go to JMoreLiving.com for more news updates. After all that, try to have a happy Purim. <laughs> Bye. Bye.